So in this video, we're going to cover the pivot ball stud length and the throwout bearing length. And so it's important to take some measurements. We've basically put a straight edge across the bell housing. And as we measure from the bell housing down to the diaphragm fingers, that's the distance that we want to know. The factory pivot ball stud will be set up for the factory depth of the clutch or how far it comes in. So when you change to, for example, a twin disc clutch like this RXT from McLeod, then that clutch system will come out farther. It's a thicker clutch, and so we have to adjust the pivot ball to accommodate that. So with the factory pivot ball stud, this is the amount of travel that we get. And as you see, the throwout bearing makes it pretty much all the way to the end of the retainer sleeve before there's any sort of binding, because this is swinging like a door, not coming straight out. So eventually it will stop pushing straight and start to bind. Now this is with the pivot ball shortened. You can see our range is different now. We're starting farther back and it won't go all the way to the end without uh, a little bit of binding because again, we're swinging it and eventually it stops pushing straight. So our goal is to adjust the pivot ball stud so that it's in deep enough where the throttle bearing won't hit the clutch too soon and you can't even get the transmission on, but it's also out far enough that we get the proper swing. And so in the end, we want to have this amount of play right here because the diaphragm fingers will grow as the clutch wears. So you want a little bit of wiggle room. We ended up with about three millimeters um, so that as that clutch grows, you're not stuck with the throwout bearing, not able to retract. Now, of course, we won't have that much slop in the end. We're going to use our firewall adjuster to adjust that slack out of it when it's all done. But we want to have that room to grow. So with the new clutch installed, now we're going to want to take our same measurements from the diaphragm fingers to the bell housing. And remember, if you're measuring on one side of the ruler, we need to subtract this amount uh, or try to get a better measurement. So uh, this one works pretty good, 48.25 millimeters if we're going from the diaphragm fingers up until we get to the back of the ruler. Uh, it's a little bit more wobbly that way, kind of harder to get uh, a reading. So 53.35 or so was the factory one. So what we're going to do is look at those two numbers, and in this case, this is going to be a difference of about 5.1 millimeters. Uh, the new clutch comes out farther than the old one. So we're going to work with some adjustability on this using the pivot ball stud. And so here's the factory one. And uh, as you can see, it wears out at the top. You can get some clutch vibration from that. So it needed to be replaced anyway. But if you look at the stock modular pivot ball, it's huge, so it won't work. Uh, the one that we have factory is from the T56, and the one we're using today is the McLeod 16912. And so if you look, it's the exact same length overall for the, for the stud, but the adjustable jam nut is how we're going to be able to change how far in this pivot ball stud can go compared to the other one. Now measuring the pivot ball stud from the factory, we're getting a pretty good reading here of about 37.11 millimeters. And so now that we have that measurement, we can take our 7 8 inch socket and we're going to put it all the way over the pivot ball stud. You could use an open end wrench too. It's very easy on the T56 with the flat case without the bell housing. Some transmissions it's harder to get a, a wrench angled in there. So we're going to go ahead and remove this. Um, after we have that measurement and we're going to check the depth of the threads. The T56 Magnum apparently doesn't uh, go in as far so you might have to cut your pivot ball stud down if you need it to get any shorter. So um, as with the stock T56 we're looking at about 30 millimeters is how far that uh, threads will go in normally. So um, that's deeper than what the factory pivot ball has as far as the threads as you can see. And so we're just going to set these down and kind of take some comparisons and check the video description because I'm going to make a video that's every measurement that I took, which was a lot of measurements. But uh, what we're going to do now is take our new adjustable pivot ball stud and we're going to thread this one in. Now, when it's all said and done, we will use Loctite and uh, bolt down that jam nut. So this is just for test fitting. So we'll just put this in all the way and then tighten down that jam nut. And eventually we'll do that with a wrench. Uh, with that said, now uh, it's in as far as it can, and we're going to put the old bolt up there or take measurements using our uh, caliper again. But as you can see, the adjustable pivot ball comes in just a little bit more than the factory one when it's uh, all the way threaded in. 
So when we compare these two measurements, the factory pivot ball stud came in at 37.11 millimeters, and the new one, when it's installed all the way in, came in at almost six millimeters shorter than the other one. So uh, the reading we got was 31.13. Uh, so that's going to help us because that's going to be helping bring the uh, throwout bearing assembly away from the deeper clutch that we have now installed. So here's the factory ones just to look at. Well, there's no way that other one would work. And everybody wants a short answer of how long should the pivot ball stud be. But what you're going to see in this video is you have to take measurements to find out because it does matter depending on which transmission you have, how thick your clutch is, which flywheel you're running, if it's the regular T56, if it's the T56 Magnum and its case differences, everything like that. So with that said, I have seen on research that people have gone five millimeters shorter all the way up to 12 millimeters shorter to make this fit depending on transmission and clutch type. One other side note, if you do end up having to cut the actual bolt down, the length of it has to be at least the width of the bolt for it to be a strong bolt or it will lose its integrity. So make sure that the length when you're all done, if you've had to cut it way down, that it can thread into the transmission at least uh, how wide the bolt is as well. So this is the Valvoline Molly Fortified Gray Grease. This is good stuff to use for these components. As you see, it has a drop point of 500 degrees Fahrenheit. On the retainer sleeve, that's the next part that we want to grease, so we're just greasing that up. The clutch fork does have some grease where the pivot ball stud goes, but we're going to add a little bit more. So we're going to slide our clutch fork on, and then we're going to make sure to grease the pivot ball stud as well. And so we're going to go ahead and, and uh, just push this up and it clicks into place. Make sure that you have some nice swing here. And so the next thing we're going to look at is our swing. Since we have shortened the pivot ball stud, it affects the way that this clutch fork will swing. If you look at the way it swings, it's almost like a door. So at one point, it will no longer be pushing that throwout bearing straight. It will start to bind up. So uh, you can put a mark on your new pivot ball stud and adjust it. I like to go maybe one revolution at a time and then tighten down the jam nut and then take measurements and see how it swings. Now we don't have to have it swing all the way to the front because our clutch is deeper and so we're going to be contacting the clutch first. Uh, but uh, you do want to take measurements as I'll show you what we did a little bit later and make sure that you're going to be within range where you're going to get a full travel on that clutch fork. So to show you physically as an example, our diaphragm fingers to bell housing was about 48.25 millimeters. So if we take 48.25 millimeters and we go from the case outward, that's where the clutch is going to basically be. And so we need to make sure that our throwout bearing can be retracted far enough that it's not hitting those clutch fingers um, as we're installing the transmission. So for this measurement, we went straight up from the throwout bearing in the fully retracted position and measured the case to the throwout bearing. And we came out at about 45.10 millimeters. So where we were 48 millimeters uh, from the case to the diaphragm fingers, then that means we have plenty of room and we're not going to be contacting our throwout bearing uh, and diaphragm fingers before the transmission's installed. So we can now see we have about three millimeters of clearance between where the diaphragm fingers will be and where the clutch fork will be in its fully retracted position. So what this is going to look like on the car as an example, you can see when it's installed we have just enough movement and so if we wanted to we could move the pivot ball in or out to adjust this if we're too close or too far away. Um, remember the diaphragm fingers will start to spread out as the clutch wears so you don't want to have it completely tight. You want to have a little bit of a, of a gap there for it to grow into as well. You don't want to have it so you can't adjust the throwout bearing and it's stuck against the diaphragm finger. So just make sure you're getting accurate measurements from the face of the throwout bearing up to the case and then from the case to the diaphragm fingers which would be the bell housing to diaphragm fingers and just make sure that you're going to have that gap. So you can see we got our three millimeter gap here that's going to be perfect as you saw um, when it was installed. Uh, we had just a little bit of movement forward and back on the uh, diaphragm fingers to the throwout bearing, which is what we want. 
McLeod says it takes 445 thousandths, or basically half of an inch, to disengage the clutch. Uh, so basically what we want to do is look at that measurement and, and make sure that our clutch travel is going to be enough. Now starting farther back on the retainer sleeve, it shouldn't be a problem. If we were starting forward, we'd be afraid that the throwout bearing would come off of the retainer sleeve. So for us, it's about binding, when it's going to bind up, and deciding if you want to bring that uh, pivot ball stud out or in more. Here's the factory swing, as you can see, it brings it all the way to the end. And so with the uh, new pivot ball in place, you can see how it basically just stops that swing a little bit shorter. So we shouldn't need it to go all the way to the end or we'll be over extending that uh, diaphragm fingers on the clutch. So it's okay for it to start a little bit farther back and it's okay if it starts to bind right at the very end. So from our measurements, and this was the travel that was indicated down at the uh, clutch fork, it was 1.235 inches of travel is what it took for the clutch to fully engage on the stock system. So basically we're going to look at that amount and we're going to compare it to how much travel the clutch fork is going to make at the bottom of the clutch fork and how far that goes in make sure it translates to our half of an inch or our 445 thousandths. So basically as we take the measurements down here we came in right where we needed to be. We have full clutch disengagement as you can see by the springs and everything that's working there. Another clutch diagram shows that the clutch fork should also be perfectly straight from the pivot ball straight down when it's in the retracted position. Now since we're also changing geometry of how it swings and everything like that, it might not be perfect. So uh, we are using aftermarket components and trying to get it to swing on a range it wasn't really designed for. So when you're happy with where it's at, make sure you do remember to go back and put your Loctite on and put your uh, pivot ball stud in and then tighten down that jam nut. We tightened it down nice and firm as well and uh, so just remember with the T56 Magnum you might have some differences in the case it might not go in as deep you might have to cut some threads on the stock uh, T56 this one worked out perfect so for my application I threaded my pivot ball stud all the way in and that was about six millimeters as you saw now it could be different for yours so don't just go off of my numbers because the thickness of the flywheel the difference in what clutch you're running, the transmission itself, it can all make differences. Uh, so just make sure that you are taking measurements and everything is coming out how it should before you install it. Of course you want to have all the measurements right so you don't have to take the transmission off again. So in the end, again, you just want to make sure that that throw out bearing is going to have plenty of room um, when the clutch cable is disconnected. And then once it's connected, uh, the throwout bearing is designed to constantly spin just not with a lot of pressure on it. There are some things out here like this uh, free play elimination kit that I have. This is old and discontinued but what it basically does is just helps push that clutch fork backward so when you let go of the clutch uh, there is some way of, of kind of taking the pressure off of the throwout bearing but uh, you do want it spinning. So you want it adjusted properly where you don't have too much pressure on the throwout bearing and you want to make sure that you have enough clutch travel because if you're starting farther back and you don't have full uh, clutch travel then it won't disengage and uh, you can get locked out between gears and, and you can hurt the synchros if you're not fully disengaged as you're shifting gears. So this is just something we're kind of setting up as we're setting the uh, throwout bearing distance. Uh, we're going to make sure if you hear that it's just got the tiniest little click before it starts to engage and so we can adjust that out with the firewall adjuster so anyway thanks for watching hopefully you enjoyed the video check the video description um, I'm gonna put all the other videos that are similar to this or also related to this as well as my Mustang maintenance playlist and if you're new to the channel feel free to subscribe thanks guys